Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to do to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a real talk, which I don't feel like I filmed in a while, so I'm excited to film this for you guys. I feel like I'm very fall vibes with my colors, and then I've got my like Christmas mug of tea, so I think you can see where my head is at and where my direction is. It's been really hot in Texas, y'all. It's been really, um, it's been pretty crazy, but okay, so. This video I feel like was inspired by um, one of our most recent parties actually that we had at our house. So we like to host, I would say like every other month. It really just honestly depends because sometimes just like things come up and we're just like unable to host or whatever. And so it kind of used to be like more every month, but now I feel like it's leaning towards like every other. So anyways, my birthday was in June. And so we had like this, it was like, a birthday gathering but it was more just kind of like oh like we're hanging out or whatever and then it also just like happened to be like the same week as my birthday and so we had friends over we hung out it's always like a great time or whatever you know everyone like brings you know their magic cards and it's whatever and it's like one of those things where it's like we obviously could do, like play other games but we always end up just like playing magic and it's always a really fun time. Everyone always has like a really great time. We usually have enough for like two pods. Um, and so we have like our dining room table and then we have like this one of those like fold out tables or whatever, you know, those like things. And so we got those. And so we got those two pods set up or whatever. Anyways, so and I have said this before, but I am someone who realistically at hardly many points of the game I don't feel as though I've clinched the victory until actually like the last moment there's a lot of people who when they're playing especially in decks that I feel like I sort of play and if you've seen any of my deck techs who've been following me for a while you know that I'm someone who I don't tend to play like a tap out type type of deck like I'm someone who you know plays on instants and things like that and I'm you know if I'm not playing instants I'm playing cards like Vidalcanori Leyland of Anticipation, things like that. So I'm able to like, cast my stuff at instant speed. And I'm not really someone who plays tap out decks. Where I'm, I'm usually someone who like, I plays a lot of removal as well too. So I'm usually someone who can like deal with the board or whatever. And I feel like I'm not someone, regardless of that, I don't feel like I'm someone who feels like, okay, I've definitely got this game in the bag, regardless of what the, the situation is, until that actual final moment. Because here's my thing, is if I look out at my opponent's board and I see, you know, and when I say opponents, I really mean like my friends. When I look out at my friend's boards and I see, okay, everyone's tapped out or whatever, you know, I'm probably in the clear and I'm probably pretty safe to do whatever insane things it is that I'm doing. And um, yeah, and that's kind of usually, you know, how it goes. And I feel like there's a lot of people who like, and I feel like my confidence as a deck builder has just exponentially grown so much. And regardless of that sort of sentiment, even if I don't have that sort of like everything is fine, you know, mentality or whatever, because I really do have that belief. I do feel like my confidence has gotten so much better, but I think that there are areas still that I struggle with. And so, for example, I was playing with one of my friends. Lindsay, who I hadn't seen in a really long time. Um, when I had discussed about our game store clothing, some of my friends had kind of gone to like different game stores or whatever. Lindsay goes to a different card shop, right? And um, she has found a really great community there and she likes it. So it was really great to see her, for example, because I hadn't seen her, I think, in like, I want to say like a year or so. And so it was really, really great to see her. And the last time that her and I had played is, and, and obviously people change their decks and stuff like that. And I'm I'm someone, and I will say, I feel like pretty unlike a lot of my friends, because a lot of my friends, I feel like, love to, like, we tinker as well, but I feel like I kind of have, like, a deck, and I will make adjustments. Sorry, if you can see Zelda in the background. She's in her happy place. She loves my office. It's, like, one of her favorite places in the house. She loves to be in here, and she's... Leia was really mean to her earlier. She like literally cut her off and was like, no, I'm sitting here now. So I think she's like reclaiming, like, this is my area. Um, anyways, so I, I totally lost my train of thought. Okay, so talking about Lindsay. So it was great to see her. But last time we played, yeah. So she she was tinkering with her, um, with one of her decks. And I asked her, I was like, oh, do you still have your angel deck? And she was like, no. She, I'm pretty sure she said she took it apart, which I was, I really was excited for her to have that because I have Avacyn and she has Lyra. And I was like really excited because I was like, oh, we can like, you know, play those decks against each other, which I think would be really fun. Anyways. And I feel like, and we, we had a game. I played two games that night, which is funny because over the course of like four hours, you would think that that's not really a lot of games, but sometimes in Commander, those games take a really long time. 
And so I don't honestly remember what I played. I might have played Avicen. I think I did play Avicen anyways because I was just, I wanted to play it and I feel like, you know, that whole thing. But I feel like I, the last time I was really like wary of not playing against her in the sense of like, because of her, just like the decks and the power level, I feel like that she had. And I was really like a little worried about it. Anyways, ended up being fine. And I feel like too, one thing that I feel like I need to realize about myself is I'm also doing powerful things. Like just because I have a game here or there where it doesn't really go accordingly and has nothing to do truly with what I win when I win. And I've said this before, is like, even if I lose a game, but I've still done the deck has done its job. I don't feel bad about it. Like I had this game the other day where I was playing with my friends. I was playing with Jorge and he played goblins. I don't remember the name of his commander. It's not Krenko, um, because I feel like that's what a lot of people think when they think goblins. And he, guys, he literally killed me on turn three. And like when I say that that is like so not the norm, like for my play group, like that really isn't. There's a couple of people that I play with. I haven't played with them in a really long time, but they have really more powerful and aggressive decks. My one friend Ansley also has a um, Najila the Blade Blossom deck, which is insane. And it's so funny because I was talking to her about it and she was like, this deck is really aggressive and really crazy. Like I don't want to do all the time. And one thing I really love and respect about her a lot is that she knows when she plays a game like that, right? When she's like, okay, I've done this ridiculous thing. Like she has really dumb combos where she can like energy a lot and win very like turn five or below or whatever. And she can do that. Uh, there's this other person I've played with before who has a Malcolm, Malcolm the keen eyed. And then I always forget the name of that partner commander. It's the red one. And it's like, whenever it deals damage, it deals like damage it's like the partner so it deals like it to them and then all of the other opponents I believe I forgot exactly what the, the name is but anyways his deck is really aggressive and he has so many combos and it's so much like that but anyways going back to Ansley but that's not the norm I guess is what I'm trying to say about like my playgroup those sorts of decks are not like that sort of thing and regardless too because I always feel like whenever I post one of my decks out there and I feel like I'm like wow this deck is really competitive whatever whatever it always get a little nervous because it's like is someone going to be like well how does this win or how does this work or you don't have enough mana acceleration or you don't have a mana crypt or or dual lands or anything like that and it's like I feel like what's so important and what's so critical to know and that's why too whenever I talk about like budget cards or I talk about cards that are worth the money especially I'm always like this really does depend on your play group because if you are playing with a really really aggressive play group you're probably gonna have to spend unfortunately like, a lot of money but if you're playing in a play group where like your games are lasting for like an hour and a half two hours or whatever and they're lasting a long time and you've got you know into the double digits with your turns you're probably okay to run some of those cheaper cards you know we went back to Ansley. We were talking about her as, and so she played her Najila deck, crushed everybody. This, I wasn't playing with her. This was in a separate game, but Paul's telling me about it. And, um, you know, she was like, she put it down and she was like, I don't have another commander project. Um, but she was like, I would like, she's working on one, but she's like, I need to borrow a deck. So she ended up borrowing, uh, one of Paul's decks. And I feel like for her, I really respect like that okay, I've done something really powerful. I'm going to like sit and put this away. Like I really respect that a lot because I feel like it can be so easy when you're in that like really competitive mentality. And she's really interesting too. And I said this to Paul, I was like, we well, have to keep in mind too. It's like, she's played in really competitive, you know, competitive modern. Like she went to one of the most recent, um, GPs or whatever. I don't know. I call all magic events GPs because I don't even know what they're called these days. There's also so many different types of events, but she went and ended up doing really well. I think it was limited, I believe, is what she ended up playing at. And she ended up doing really well in the tournament. So it's like when you have a person who's really used to playing in a more competitive sense and then they take it to commander, which can be more casual. That's the thing I really like about commander, though, is it's like that is it can really look like anything sort of things. Here's what I will say, too. Even if you or one of your friends has a really powerful and aggressive deck, if all of your, you know, you're playing a commander game against three other people. And if one of them is doing that, you've got two other people and yourself to try to stop that, which is why I feel like it's so like, that's why like EDH is politics. That's why it's just so fun, right? It's because it's like, oh, like, you know, and one of my favorite things to do, I will say, is just someone does something. And then I'm like, okay, I can deal with that. But if that thing's not going to come at me, why do I need to deal with it? And then somebody else ends up dealing with it. And it's like, oh, sweet, I can save that, you know, removal spell for something later on. So yeah, one thing that I really have loved about my current playgroup and the people I'm playing with is that like, 
when we sit down, we're not really asking a power level anymore, which I think has like come to such a really cool position that I haven't been in in a really long time. Because I feel like before, and I also think too, we know each other's decks really well. And so if like, for example, Jorge brings out his goblin deck, I'm like, all right, cool. We're playing really, really fast and really, really aggressive. I will say none of my decks are at that level, I would say, where they're doing anything. It's like probably one of the most powerful things I feel like I can do really early in the game is like get Avacyn out really early on, like maybe turn four four or so maybe turn five i don't think i've ever gotten it on turn three and it's definitely possible um i do have the jewel lotus in there and i would love to get a mana crypt as i've talked about before and i've got the ancient tomb and everything so there's definitely ways for me to do you know really powerful things and, and like too i have a lot of mana acceleration in that deck of course and there's a lot you know because it's not only avison who's expensive a lot of my other angels can you know can be as well so but that's that's still um, that's still a really really awesome thing that I feel like I'm able to do with my friends. I really love my current play group a lot, and I was like thinking about it too because as the unfortunate thing happened is when my game store had closed and a lot of us kind of like spread out is unfortunately we lost a bunch of people in the sense of like we don't see you know those people it's like every friday we would see that person we don't really get to see some of those people anymore but i feel like the current people that i'm playing with are just so incredibly awesome i'm so excited i love these people one of my friends ruben who i'll I'll show you this in my haul, but he had made me these like custom tokens for my birthday. And it was like one of the most thoughtful gifts like I've ever received. And it was just really, really endearing. And I just feel like also too, like I was like, y'all don't need to get me anything. Like I just turned 29. I had to think about that for a second. I was like, how old am I? 29. There was a, there was a clip of, of, I don't remember what video this was, but a while back where I had to think about my age and I literally had to cut the clip because I couldn't think of how old I was. Yeah, that was pretty, um, that was fun. Anyway, y'all didn't see that I cut it out so you, so you guys couldn't see, but I'm telling you about it. So I guess I'm just sharing my embarrassment, but it's fine. You, you guys can all be our secret. Okay. Um, but just like things like that, you know, that was like super endearing and super sweet. And I just feel like I really, really enjoy them a lot. And it's just been really cool to like get to know some different people too, because I'm definitely a little more on the shyer side, which is so strange because I feel like if you see me at work, and if you see me on YouTube, I feel like, you know, everyone's got like different personas, right? So I feel like it's so easy for me at work too, to like socialize with kids and socialize with adults. And then with YouTube, obviously I'm putting myself out there talking in front of the camera. Yeah, I guess it's like a little bit different, but anyways, and so meeting them or whatever, and just getting to know them as people and also just to like as magic players, like it's really, really great. I feel like we're in a really great situation because I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, man, I was like, my playgroup has shifted and I feel like it's not as large because I used to think back to like when we would have our parties and like maybe we would have like a bunch of extra people laying around, like we wouldn't have enough quite for another pod like we'd maybe have so with Paul and I we maybe have like six seven or eight people come and I remember times too where it was like more there were more but I feel like the people that we have right now are just so incredibly awesome and I feel like just because maybe like we have unfortunately like lost a lot of people or friends have moved and things like that which is really such a bummer um but I think that we have such a really great people great group of people right now which is really really incredible so yeah you you agree so I was like, yeah, I agree, mom. She just wants to like get up everywhere. Okay, you can't sniff the microphone, dear. Okay. So anyways, yeah, I feel like I still struggle and feel like I need to tell myself like, Tracy, like you do powerful things just because you sit down like in that one game with Jorge and his goblins or whatever, I could have been so much like, well, I didn't do anything. This sucks. I suck. And it could have been so easy to do that. But I think I was just like, okay. I was like, I was definitely not expecting that. And I was definitely, I don't really remember why I was targeted. Oh, I remember. Okay. So it, Jorge tried to be like, oh, it wasn't because you won last game. I played the first game and I played AC, by the way, guys. AC has gotten really wild. I do want to do a mock deck tech on that deck at some point. I'm not promising it soon or anything like that, but I would like to do that this year. But I think it would be really cool to film that mock deck tech because I think you can build that really easily. It reminds me a lot of Omnoth, but this is very different. Um, but I really, really enjoy this deck a lot. And AC is just absolutely wild, guys, because it's so aggressive. It's like, it's insane. And it's too, it's like, I'm playing like th two, three, four lands. 
you know, in a turn, I'm drawing that many cards. And it's just absolutely wild. And so I made a joke. I was like, Jorge was like, you and like killed me. Cause I was playing, I then I played Alila the next game, which Alila is not, Alila just takes time a little bit to build. I would say, um, it's a little bit on the slower side. Like I won't, I won't pull that out. I will say if somebody is going for something really aggressive, I say as he then plays goblins and killed me on turn three, but that's not really the norm. So there you go. But anyways, so made a joke. I was like, why'd you kill me? I was like, you know, and then I was like, oh, you're just upset that I, that I won on last game. Guys, I had like a cultivator classes, which by the way, I love cultivator classes. It's very expensive. But if, if you have like 20 extra dollars laying around, pick up a cultivator classes wild i love it and it's so funny because you would think like oh well you probably dropped that and you've got like so many lands i literally only got like the one extra land drop from it because i i ran out of lands because i had like 20 on the board and so i had uh that and then i had multani i believe as well and then i played triumph of the hordes which is ridiculous is triumph of the hordes like overkill it is an overkill card. And I'm not usually one who runs a lot of those like overrun type of effects, like those overrun kill cards, but Tramp of the Hordes is just too good. And it's kind of like you play it and you just win and it's just really fun. So I just killed everybody and it was fabulous. I love that. And so I feel like what I need to do, and I feel like what you need to do too, if you're like me, is just, if you have a bad game or whatever, sit, reflect, think, was it me? Did I make a mistake? Was it a deck building thing? Because here's the thing is like, there have been times like I've made tweaks and like, I'll give you a great example. Tassiger. Tassiger has been fully foiled for a while. Um, and you know, it's interesting because you would think that over the years, maybe I would make a lot of changes to Tassiger with all new sets coming out and stuff. I really haven't made a lot of changes to Tassiger, but these days I've been really looking at figuring out my mana acceleration, figuring out my curve. I've been trying to lower my curve a lot these days. I feel like just I'm a tempo person and I feel like that works really, really well in EDH is like always being able to do something and, you know, always having cards in your hand, you know, getting those mana accelerations out, all that sort of stuff. And I feel like that's how I feel like I like to play that and just remove everybody's everything because that's how I live my life. Like I, guys, I have this most ridiculous game. I was like playing Leela and I had like three board ups in my hand. Maybe it was two. No, it was three. And I was like, <laughs> Tracy, this is a little crazy. It's fine. I, that was the game that I lost miserably. Oh wait, was that a different game? Maybe I did play three games that day. I don't remember. Anyways, moving on. It's really important to definitely self-reflect. I definitely feel like if a game didn't go your way or whatever, it's kind of figuring out like why that thing happened. It's like, okay, I didn't do this. Did, is it because the draws weren't super good, whatever, whatever. And I think I'm someone too, who's very like proactive where it's like, if I draw a card and it makes me really irritated, which has definitely happened. I've definitely happened recently. And the weird thing too, as well, is I've noticed a lot of it with me is these days I would be drawing a card that I otherwise have really enjoyed playing with and then I draw it and I was like I don't want this card in my hand and I'll give you a really good example of a card I feel like and because this was in Tassiger is Muldrifter I don't think Muldrifter is a bad card I just want to be extremely clear here I kind of realized though every time I I, I, I drew it and I took this out maybe a couple months ago or so and I realized, I was like, Tracy, I was like, I don't really want this card. And it's it's odd because you would think you'd want it because it's a creature. You cast it for three mana and then it ends up in the yard. I don't really know how to explain why I decided to kind of part ways with that card. But like my style of deck building and what I want out of cards is so incredibly different, like I said. And so it's like, and when am I ever going to hard cast in my life a Muldrifter? It's probably not going to happen. And then at five mana, do I really want to be hard casting a Muldrifter? Probably not. There's probably other things that I want to do. Zelda is like, I really wish y'all could see her right now. She's just, she does this thing where she like, she's, it just bit me. <laughs> that was very nice. We always say we're, they're overstimulated or whatever that happens. Cause that's what happens if cats ever like played by you, they're overstimulated and stop giving them attention. So you're done. Time out for you. Okay. I'll give you attention in like five minutes. <laughs> just not right now. Oh, uh, ah. And then she always does this. And then I always lose my train of thought that I can't remember. But anyways guys, I think that was it for this real talk. I know this was all over the place and I say that all the time, but that's kind of what real talks are meant to do. They're not meant to be super organized. They're just meant to be, we're having a chit chat. I feel like originally I was going to call this video about confidence, but now I feel like I talked about so many different things. 
feel like we talked about a lot of different things here. So I don't really know what I'll be calling this video, but anyways, that's it for me, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and leave me a comment below on how you feel about this topic. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I'll catch y'all on my next one.